Good day to you. You're welcome to our. It's okay. Just that. Good day to you. You are welcome to RCC Oklahoma City's Open Heavens Daily Devotional. The Open Heavens Daily Devotional is written by our Father and the Lord, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. A. Deboy. And I pray that as you join me today, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, 27th September 2020, we'll be looking at the topic Challenged, Not Defeated. Challenged, Not Defeated. I'll be taking a memory verse from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, which says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Our Bible text is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verses 8 to 12. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 12, which says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. If the world ate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. John chapter 15 verse 18. You must be aware that the moment you say yes to Jesus, you have signed up for persecution. By mentioning his name alone, you could develop enemies. Yet, he doesn't want you to worry because he has overcome the world, according to John chapter 16 verse 33. If as a Christian, you don't go through any persecution, you may need to check your salvation. Jesus said, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Luke chapter 6 verse 26. So we are looking at the fact that as a Christian, as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus, once you've accepted Jesus, you've also signed up for persecution. In fact, there are places where you can mention the name of Jesus. We don't even need to think so far. Even in some so-called Christian countries now, it has become difficult to say a prayer. It has become difficult to even, you know, read your Bible or play Christian music. You know, they say, oh no, you are trying to force their religion down, your religion down their throat and things like that. So there's going to be some form of persecution once you say you're a child of God. In fact, if there is no form of persecution um, that you are facing, based on your Christian faith, then something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong. Like Luke chapter 6 verse 26 that we read, it said, you know, woe unto you when all men speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. You know, the, the uh, Jesus was saying that the ancient Israelites, you know, loved to say good things about false prophets because the false prophet, prophet was doing things and saying things that the people wanted. That everyone wanted not what god wanted if you actually stand for god the world will be against you if you stand for god you will face some persecution you face some oppositions from certain quarters it is expected but i mean the beauty of it is that jesus has overcome the world for us every true christian will face persecution at the office in the family amongst friends or with strangers what matters is how you handle it. Some go back to the world because they cannot stand, while some others get stronger after going through it. Which category are you in? So every Christian is going to face persecution. We've established that. Your, the persecution may come in your office. It may come from even your family members who think that, oh, your service to God or your followership of Jesus is, you know, is ridiculous. And they, will, they may oppose you for it. It could be even strangers, people you don't know before, who may frown at you for expressing your Christian faith. Or it could even be your friends. They may mock you. They may make jest of you. They may oppose you. They may fight you over it. Now, because it is certain that persecution will come to a child of God, the question is, will you stand or not? Some people face these persecutions. They face these issues and 
they decide to go back to the world, they join the world because you know the world says if you can't beat them, join them. So once the opposition becomes so much, they bend, they cave in, and they go back into the world. While some actually get stronger from the um, persecution. When persecution occurs, they stand firm, they stand their ground, they stand their, you know, in their faith and believe in Jesus, and they grow stronger as Christians. So what category are you? Are you amongst those, if you face persecution, that have turned back? because you couldn't stand your position or you're among those who despite your position despite the persecution despite the challenges you have stood strong for jesus and you've kept going be deliberate about increasing your spiritual strength study your bible more pray more be regular as fellowships with the brethren this is because surely your spiritual strength will be tested someday according to proverbs 24 verse 10 on such a day, it is how much of God you have in you that will determine your actions. So, be deliberate about building your spiritual strength. Like we know that as human beings, physically, the, you know, if you are well built up, you eat well, you exercise well, you are physically, um, you are physically okay. Even when certain diseases want to come in, you have strength or immunity to fight back. Even when certain situations happen, you have the strength to tackle them. So also spiritually, if you don't feed yourself with the word of God, if you don't pray regularly, if you don't fellowship with the brethren, these are places or things or, or you know, um, activities that can actually build you up, build up your faith, build you up as a Christian. Then when issues of life come, such as persecutions and oppositions, you may not be able to stand. So we need to build up our spiritual strength. We need to build up our spiritual muscles. Pray more, study the Bible more, be um, at Christian programs more, so that we can be, you know, built up in Christ and we can face any challenge that may come our way. Those who pray in tongues regularly are supernaturally empowered to withstand any form of persecution. This is why Paul did not relent in preaching the gospel despite all the persecution he went through. He remained steadfast. Peter denied Jesus before he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. But as soon as the Holy Ghost came upon him, he endured persecution and described it as a good thing, according to Acts chapter 5, verse 41. So we have been told that praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, supernaturally empowers you as a Christian. And you know, a contrast was given. Apostle Paul, like he said in um, 1 Corinthians, that he prayed in tongues more than everyone in the Corinthian church. And, you know, we could see the amount of spiritual strength he had. Despite all the persecutions he faced, despite all the oppositions, the dangerous situations he had to pass through for the sake of the gospel, he kept preaching. Meanwhile, Peter, before the Holy Spirit came upon him, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he denied Jesus when push came to shove. But after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Peter was willing to die for the sake of the gospel, was willing to face persecution and overcome. So, pray in the Spirit, read your Bible, fellowship with the brethren. No matter how much the devil challenges you, do not yield. No matter how much you have been threatened to accept a bribe or manipulate figures, stand strong. As long as you stand with Christ, you will never be defeated. He has already overcome the world. So the devil will definitely challenge us. He will definitely throw issues at us. But it is up to us not to yield. Don't take bribes. Don't do what will not be pleasing to God. No matter the pressure, don't let us fall for the temptation. And let us always remember that Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus has conquered the world. No matter what may be coming at us, let us know that Jesus has won the victory for us. And I pray that you have this in mind. God will help us to continue to stand strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Our prayer point says, Father, give me strength to withstand any persecution that the devil brings my way in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are saying, O oh God, today that you give us strength. We are asking that you give us strength to be able to stand strong and overcome every form of persecution, every opposition, every challenge that the devil may throw away in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Help us to constantly remember that you have overcome the world. Help us to build ourselves spiritually, to study our Bibles more, to pray more, to pray in tongues, and to fellowship with the brethren. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. God bless you.